now is the exec is the uh, CEO of Michigan Works Association. Ryan Hunt is with us now on the Michigan Megacast. Ryan, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me, Tyler. It's a pleasure to be here with you this morning. Yeah, good to have you with us as well. So uh, let's start off, for those that may be unfamiliar, can you tell us what the Michigan Works Association is and what it does to help workforce development in the state of Michigan, but also uh, to help and advocate for workers in the state of Michigan? Absolutely, yeah. So the Michigan Works Association, we are a nonprofit based in Lansing, and you may have heard of the Michigan Works system in Michigan. Hopefully many of the viewers today are familiar with their local Michigan Works office. There are 16 Michigan Works agencies throughout the state of Michigan, strategically located throughout all corners of the state. Those 16 Michigan Works agencies have 66 service centers and 33 one-stop centers uh, that are all physical locations throughout the state. And those facilities and the staff that are there in those buildings are there to serve both job seekers in our communities and employers who are looking to hire individuals uh, each day uh, in a range of industries, a range of occupations. So if you're looking for uh, job seeker support or if you're an employer looking to make some hires in your local community, the Michigan Works Office, you can really think of it as an extension of your HR team uh, there to support the, the hiring and the employability skills and the upskilling of our workforce here in the state of Michigan. And so the Michigan Works Association represents those 16 Michigan Works offices across the state. And we do that in three key buckets. The first bucket is primarily legislative advocacy at the federal and the state level. We recognize that workforce development is going to be a key component in ensuring that the state of Michigan remains on the right track toward long-term economic resiliency, especially as we hopefully start coming out of the pandemic a little bit more here in the coming months. Uh, we also focus on professional development. We host a number of workshops and training sessions for frontline Michigan work staff at each of those 16 agencies across the state on an annual basis. We have a few that are actually going on uh, this week. And then we also focus on raising the visibility of the workforce system in Michigan. And we do so through a number of key events throughout the year. We just had our annual impact awards in Lansing in late March, uh, just a few weeks ago, where we had a winner from each of the 16 Michigan Works agencies. Some of them were employers. Some of them were employees of companies in our communities. Some were job seekers or, or community partners. And so through those efforts and awarding and recognizing those individual contributors to our economy, we're raising the visibility of all the things that our workforce system here in Michigan can accomplish through the Michigan Works system. And then we also have our annual conference coming up September 11th through the 13th at Soaring Eagle Casino and Resort in Mount Pleasant. That'll be our first in-person annual conference in over two years. So Ryan, at this moment in time, given that, as you said, we're starting to, especially economically, uh, come out from the throes of the pandemic and socially and societally in Michigan and the U.S. across the world, we're seeing things sort of transition away from pandemic era behaviors and pandemic era precautions as of now, uh, and that could change. But at, at this moment in time, where is Michigan economically, and especially with the job market in terms of availability, in terms of what is open, and in, in terms of what's being looked for in an employee by many of the companies that have these job openings? Yep, great question. Uh, there's some good news and some bad news, right? Uh, the good news is Michigan's economic recovery from the pandemic continues to, I think, exceed expectations for many of us um, who have, have been living through and working with both employers and job seekers the last couple of years just to keep them engaged in the economy, make sure that the businesses have the right folks to hire, but also the job seekers have the right skills and the right resources to get into positions that are of higher wage quality, maybe an opportunity for them to continue upskilling themselves and, and being able to uh, raise a family and support themselves in their community. So the good news is, again, the economy in Michigan continues to rebound quite extraordinarily. Uh, the bad news, however, is here in Michigan, we have a lower than average labor force participation rate when you look across the national economy right now. And that's due to a, a number of factors. Um, right here in Michigan, for example, the uh, hospitality industry was one of the hardest hit industries in Michigan. And when you compare that to the hospitality industry across the entire nation, Michigan saw a rather dramatic effect 
in a negative fashion as a result of the pandemic, especially early on, you know, in the spring and summer months of 2020. That has continued to rebound. However, uh, we are st we're still seeing uh, a number of job openings in some of those areas in the hospitality industry in Michigan. And you know, uh, just as well as anybody, Tyler, we rely heavily on our tourism industry, not just in the summer months with uh, beautiful northern Michigan. If you go to you know Traverse City or Alpena and you enjoy the, the beaches uh, and the wonderful tourist destinations, but it's really a year round tourist attraction for individuals, not just in the US, but, but globally as well. So we're doing all that we can to help support those workers in the hospitality industry and working with other partners like at the Michigan Restaurant and Lodging Association to help out uh, with that industry. Uh, so the more that we can do to help increase the labor force participation rates in Michigan, you know, we're happy to partner with other uh, public stakeholders like the Department of Labor and Economic Opportunity and also private stakeholders and companies to ensure that when they're looking for eligible qualified workers, they have the right resources in place. Maybe there's some federal or some state assistance they can tap into to help uh, hire uh, different populations, such as those who may have been previously incarcerated that are now returning to work, maybe individuals with disabilities, just kept trying to overturn um, any leaf that they can uh, in order to find that qualified talent here in Michigan in order to raise those labor force participation rates. We're joined by Ryan Hunt, the Chief Executive Officer of the Michigan Works Association, joining us on the Michigan Megacast. More information on their website, michiganworks.org. That's michiganworks.org. Uh, for those who aren't qualified for certain jobs, uh, what do you recommend to, to become more skilled at, or to put themselves in a more advantageous position to acquire some of these open jobs that they may be seeking at this time, if, whether they are currently at another job and continue to labor at that job or are out, out of the job market that at this point, maybe on unemployment or, how, or an expired unemployment? Great question. What we're seeing right now, and this is not just here in Michigan, this is really nationally and in, in many cases globally, uh, especially in some of our, our competing uh, countries across the uh, across the entire world. Uh, it's, it's going to take a more educated, more qualified, better skilled workforce in order for us to compete in a 21st century global economy, especially in some of the driving industries like advanced manufacturing and technology we're the state that put the world on wheels. And in order for us to continue maximizing our potential and winning the future in many of these driving industries, we know that we need folks who have more than just a high school diploma. We need people with post-secondary credentials. It may not necessarily be a associate's degree or a bachelor's degree, but we need folks with the right credentials and the right certifications in order for Michigan to remain globally competitive uh, and, and globally relevant for that matter. And so you may have heard of Governor Whitmer's 60 by 30 initiative. And the goal there is by 2030, 60% of working age adults in Michigan to have some type of post-secondary degree or credential. And what we're seeing, if you look at the state's top 50 hot jobs through 2028, the bulk of those jobs are going to require some type of post-secondary credential or post-secondary degree. And so what we're encouraging individuals is to contact their local Michigan Works office in their community. You can get hooked up with uh, a number of individuals who are the frontline staff there and day in and day out, they're helping to serve as career coaches for job seekers and helping them align their passions and their interests with in-demand jobs of the future uh, by upskilling themselves, looking for not only uh, you know the technical skills that individuals need, but also the employability skills or what's oftentimes referenced as soft skills you think of time management, the ability to work in a team environment. Those are critical skills right now that can help set individuals apart from the rest of the competition if they're looking for new employment opportunities. And again, by engaging with their local Michigan Works Office, there's a number of resources that individuals can tap into that can help offset the cost or maybe even eliminate the cost altogether for upskilling opportunities. On the other side of that coin, you have these employers that are looking to fill a lot of these jobs. In some cases, they have a, a mass of openings in their companies, uh, in, in certain departments of their companies, certainly in certain industries, uh, like you had said, uh, you had mentioned hospitality in particular is really hurting for employees at this time. You were quoted recently in a Detroit Free Press article uh, that focused on that the so-called great resignation, uh, w particularly focusing on restaurant workers, those in hospitality, restaurant uh, restaurant workers, uh, uh, those working in hotels and so on. 
and, and which you referred to to the that situation as the quote great upgrade not great resignation what do you mean by that and how does that context play into what employers should be focusing on at this point to fill some of those job openings given yep. the current state of our market sure yeah when i mentioned the the great upgrade you know, we've heard the the phrase over the last couple of years the great resignation and i think when people hear that they think people are just sitting on the sidelines not willing to re-engage in the economy it's primarily impacting uh mid mid it, middle income to higher income white collar workers who are now resigning their positions and you know either not re-engaging the economy or being very cautious about what they're going to do for the next career opportunity what we're seeing in the information from here in michigan and across the country is it's really uh really should be a, a great up the great upgrade is what it probably should be called because that uh that dynamic is more uh more heavily impacting lower wage workers who may be looking for the next opportunity and they may be leaving for a job that pays you know 50 cents an hour more or a dollar hour and a more down the street uh, or they're looking for opportunities to re-engage in the economy in a different occupation in a different industry entirely you know we've seen individuals that are leaving certain industries uh here in michigan and across the u.s and and they're pursuing industries or occupations that are more in demand that lead to higher wage uh, higher skilled positions uh and so what we're doing right now in in coordination with our michigan works agencies and our private sector audience uh throughout the state of michigan is we're encouraging companies uh to look at ways that they can help either retain and or attract new employees uh into their company and some of the ways that they can do that is by enhancing the corporate culture within their company, not just focusing on increasing wages. We have seen wages increase quite a bit uh, through the course of the pandemic, especially in uh, certain industries like the hospitality industry. Uh, but there's only so much that a private sector company can do to increase wages before that really starts to eat into their bottom line. But there are many other things that they can do in order to help enhance that corporate culture. Part of it, we've talked a little today about upskilling and training, you know, individuals and workers are looking for companies that are interested in not just having them come in and do the job nine to five, but they want a company that's going to make that recurring investment in their professional development. So upskilling and training is a great way for companies to uh, show that return on investment for the individual workers that they have at their company. Uh, we're also seeing that uh, cross, uh, cross training and, and job shadowing into different departments or different areas of a company can also help lead to long-term retention of employees, especially if you have a company who's starting at, you know, maybe the ground level on the production floor, but they want to move into a management position. Are there things that the company can be doing in the near term to help individuals get into some type of management track, whether that's in-house training or taking some courses at the local community college that are geared toward what the individual wants to do long-term. So the better, uh, the better long-term outlook uh, the companies have in investing in their employees. We're seeing those companies are having better retention and attraction rates compared to their counterparts who may not be investing as much in those upskilling opportunities for their employees. We're joined by Ryan Hunt, the Chief Executive Officer of Michigan Works Association. Joining us on the Michigan Megacast. More information at michiganworks.org. That's michiganworks.org. How does inflation play into the job, job market at, at this time for, employer, for employers? And I would I would imagine that means a lot higher card uh, a lot higher costs, which means a lot less uh, cash flow, lower revenue, less money to spend, particularly on employment. Which then, for employees looking to seek these jobs, they may have better opportunities. They may have well, they, have, they may have opportunities for better pay in a similar position that's maybe a little bit lower in a company somewhere else than with certain companies. So just overall, what role has inflation played in this, and how long do you project, or does Michigan Works project? This could have an impact on employers and therefore on potential employees. Man, that is that is a great question. I do not pretend to be an economist, and I did not sleep at a Holiday Inn last night. Uh, but I'll do my best to answer those questions for you. At least what we're seeing right now, and, and kind of what we're hearing from some of our subject matter experts on the on the topic of inflation. Um, consumer demand has not slowed down. So even though we're seeing uh, inflation and the rising cost of goods and services across the board. Uh, not only for you know individual families to afford the basic necessities, but also for you know cost of goods and services for businesses to be able to do their jobs and for workers to be able to do their jobs. That consumer demand is helping to um, kind of offset some of the uh, some of the inflationary dynamics that you may 
typically see ahead of perhaps a, a slight or a deep recession uh, in a state or national economy. But because of that consumer demand, companies are still hiring. We're not seeing really any slowdown in the job market right now. We're still having a number of uh, companies in, in a range of industries that are continuously hiring, looking for that next best and brightest talent. Uh, and for workers as well, that inflation has led to an increase in wages, which you would think is oftentimes a good thing for wages to be able to increase. The problem that we're running into now that we're seeing uh, here in the US and across the globe is inflation is actually rising faster than, than wage increases are. But now we're also running into the dynamic where companies who have been raising their wages for the last couple of years cannot afford to raise their wages much more without cutting into that bottom line. So what the future holds for us here in Michigan and across the national economy, I think is yet to be seen. Uh, because of that consumer demand, I think we'll see that uh, inflation will continue, maybe not at the level of eight and a half percent like we saw in March. I know some economists are projecting that the inflation will uh, start to perhaps dip a little bit, uh, which will provide hopefully some relief for the cost of basic goods and necessities for uh, individuals and their families. The other dynamic we have to think about as well, you know, we we had a recession back in you know 2007, 2008, 2009. Michigan was one of the states that was hit hardest. Uh, across the entire nation when it came to uh, the Great Recession a little over a decade ago. I think the difference in dynamics this time around is the the job uh, shortages uh, that companies are running into where they have a shortage of workers, but they have a number of different job openings. And we've seen over the course of the pandemic uh, quite a few, you know, millions of people that have retired um, and maybe expedited their retirement because of the pandemic. And we're not expecting those individuals to re-engage in the economy. So even if we do see a slight slowdown um, in the hiring of employees, maybe it's just simply that companies won't hire as many people as they would have necessarily projected due to any particular slowdown. That also may just be the optimist in me, but I'm hopeful that you know, as a nation and as a state, we can weather um, any storm that is uh, coming due because of the inflationary dynamic. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're here to support the job seekers in, in order to upskill themselves to better support their individual lives and their families. We're also here to support the businesses who are looking to hire those individuals as well, uh, whether, you know, regardless of the inflation rate right now. But I, I know that we're we're tracking that very carefully and I know that it will have a significant impact probably in the medium term, I would say here in Michigan, not necessarily any short term fixes. Uh, and I would, I'm scared to make any long term projections, but I would say inflation is certainly here to serve as a dynamic impacting uh, labor force participation here in Michigan and nationally, probably, or, you know, at least for the next several months, if not longer. Ryan, anything else that we should be keeping in mind right now in terms of Michigan Works opportunity to help employers and employees alike? Sure. Uh, again, I mentioned this at the very beginning of the interview today. Workforce development is a critical component to ensuring that Michigan remains on the track toward long term economic resiliency. We're starting to get into budget discussions here in Michigan for fiscal year 23, also talking with uh, federal lawmakers about appropriations for uh, the upcoming fiscal year as it relates to workforce development. Again, we encourage both job seekers and companies to communicate and contact their local Michigan Works office. There are a number of different resources and opportunities to help offset the cost of training, perhaps even eliminate or lower some barriers that individuals may be running into when it comes to uh, sustained employability. One program that we've had a huge amount of success over the past you know, six or seven years here in Michigan is the Going Pro Talent Fund, formerly known as the Skilled Trades Training Fund. Um, that program last year in fiscal year 22 was funded at $40 million throughout the state of Michigan. That program helps companies offset the cost of training. They can receive a reimbursement of up to $1,500 per eligible trainee or up to $3,000 per new apprentice at their company. And we expect to continue supporting that program in fiscal year 23 and beyond thanks to the support. It's actually really a bipartisan support, not only from the governor's office, but on both sides of the aisle in the state house and the state senate. And so for companies, again, that's just another re resource that they can utilize to help upskill their employees and really help enrich the corporate culture at their company to reinvest in their workers. Ryan, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.